Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums today in the co-captain's chair. Mr. George Lemie, what's happening, my friend? How are you? What's up, dude? Cool. We got, uh, we've been talking about doing this one for quite a while. Months, yeah. Months, <laughs> and we're finally getting around to it. So uh, Ranking the Albums of one of the great German prog metal bands ever, Vanden Plaz, I believe is how they say their name. I, you know, for many years I said I always called it Vanden Plaz or Van Vanden Plaz or Vanden Plaz. I don't even know, but now I, I I've been told that the Germans like to basically not say the S or very lightly, so Vanden Plaz. Okay. I don't know. I I've, I've heard interviews and things where they say Vanden Plaz, not Vanden Plaz. Vanden Plaz. Name of a car, right? I think I've seen one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how they pronounce it, but no. I don't know, but a great band nonetheless. And uh, I, I've been listening to them pretty much since the beginning. So they've been around since God, when was that first album again? 1994. Right. So a long time ago, they were, uh, you know, they were one of the first of the bands that kind of came in the wake of images and words. Uh, there was a bunch of them. I remember them and Eldritch and, uh, you know, a lot of other, a uh, couple of, what was that, uh, the Elegy, remember Elegy in Paris? Yeah. And then, uh, a whole bunch of these bands, and then Symphony X a couple of years later, but uh, a bunch of these bands that kind of came in the wake of that, you know, Dream Theater first starting to hit really big, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody wanted to do, you know, something like this. Empty Tremor was another band, so you had all these, like, younger prog metal bands that were kind of popping up all over the place, but I think that uh, these guys really stuck with it. They stuck with their formula. They have a great front man and pretty much the same lineup throughout their entire history, which I think yeah. is pretty crazy. You know, it's like, I mean, uh, every, all of them. Um, and a rock solid band that I think has seen uh, their songwriting just really just get better and better with every album. I mean, if, you, if you're watching this and you like heavy prog or prog metal, like concept albums, you've come to the right place because they are really good at putting these conceptual works, uh, two-part albums and, you know, these grand concept albums and like rock, rock metal, metal operas or whatever the hell you want to call it. Really good stuff. Great musicianship, great vocals and uh, great production on most of these albums too. So we got 10 of them in total. They do have a, an acoustic album, which we're not going to cover today, which I've never heard. And George says it's pretty much garbage. So we're not going to talk about that. What's that one called? Occult. Occult. So we're not talking about that one, but we've got 10 others to get to. So uh, I'll have George kick us off with his number 10 as we work our way backwards. All right. My number 10 is uh, the debut from 1994, Color Temple. Um. It's uh, noticeably less heavy than the rest of the catalog. It's uh, pretty soft, barring a couple songs. You have Push is kind of a fast metal song, and then you have Soul Survives is a long dream theater type epic. But most of the stuff in between is uh, a little on little light in the loafers. Um, it's just they hadn't found their footing yet. And for me, uh, that album is out of time with the rest of their catalog. So I, I put it at the end. Yeah, uh, more about that in a in a minute. I, I got I got one before that I want to kind of get off my chest at number ten, which I think, you know, in comparing my bottom two, and I'll just spoiler alert, my my number nine is going to be the one that George just mentioned. Uh, but I think this one I rank a little bit lower just because I think this album was to me a real letdown compared to the one that came before it. So I'm going to go with Chronicles of the Immortals, Netherworld Two from 2015. So this is the second part to the Netherworld saga. And to me, it's kind of like a real step back with a, with not only the first part, but a lot of the albums that came before it. Uh, the, the, it's less bombastic and technical than some of the other albums. And especially the first part of this, which came before it. It's, it's not terrible by any means, but I mean, here's the kicker. It's like almost every Van den Plaats album to me is like a 4.5 or a five out of five star, most of them. 
with the exception of the two that were well, that I'm going to mention anyway. Uh, this to me, I remember I reviewed this. I gave this a four. I think I was even kind of stretching it a little bit. There are some good songs on here. Stone uh, Stone uh, Roses Edge is pretty good. The Last Fight is not bad as well. Circle of the Devil. Um, nothing bad, but it's mostly kind of like symphonic rock. Doesn't it lacks the oomph of a lot of their other albums? It's not as much metal, I think, but it's still well done. Sounds great. Uh, so for those watching, if you're into the more of the symphonic uh, side of progressive metal and you want a little less metal, more symphonic and prog and like that kind of whole big orchestral thing, this is probably the one you may want to check out. But at, in saying that, it's my least favorite out of their catalog. So that's my number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, my number nine is the most recent one. Wow. The Ghost Experiment. Oh, which one is this one? Illumination. Illuminations. Yeah, I hate when that's subtitle. Um, <laughs> again, this catalog is so, so consistent that uh, an album this good to be this low, but uh, it's just got uh, a couple of longest tracks that I feel are they're more boring moments than usual. Um, certainly a, a good amount of good songs, but uh, when you're splitting hairs, this one uh, just came out a little short for me. So I'll go with it at my number nine. And again, too, and you know, how often have we seen this with uh, really, really strong catalogs where we also have a brand, a kind of newish release. It's like, we don't really have the history with that album really yet fully. So yeah, yeah I wonder if we were, if we were to do this like three years from now, you know, and then they probably will have another album or two, then you got to wonder if illuminations might move up the rank a little bit for you. You know, it's, it yeah. happens. It's, my number nine is the Color Temple from 1994, the debut. Uh, I agree with everything George said. They're still kind of finding their way. It's maybe not as heavy. It's still pretty melodic, um, but I think it's a competent set of like Dream Theater inspired prog metal. You know, it's uh, it's it's lacking the production. I think of some of the, the albums that follow, and it's lacking a little bit of that kind of oomph which they always seem to have. But you know, some good tracks. When the wind blows is good. Judas is pretty strong. Uh, Anytime and Soul Survive, I think, are some of my favorites on the album. It's, it's a good album, it's solid, solid debut. But man, I think with their second album, they would just really start to uh, expand on their sound and, and really just get more mature, like right away. So uh, that's my number nine. I actually went a little out of order because I have Another World Path One. I only have that as digital. I should have had that nine and uh, Illuminations eight, but. I'll, I'll talk about that now. Another World Path One. For me, it's like a Peaks and Valleys record. Uh, the good songs are very good. Uh, King and Children of Lost World, The Black Knight, but uh, uh, a few too many softies for me. And uh, just uh, I'm the opposite of you, the way it compares to the sequel. I like the sequel better. And that's cool. You know, it's. I not, think yeah. not a large amount, but <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's minor rates. I'm gonna go with their third album, Far Off Grace from 1999. Um, again, really solid band, really starting to hit their stride. I absolutely love the title track. I remember I played this to death when it first came out, but it's, it's funny how as great as I thought this was when I first started getting into the band, I mean, they would just get better so quickly. Uh, into the Sun, Fields of Hope, uh, I Can See are all highlights here, but there's really no no bad songs on it. If you get the uh, the expanded uh, edition of this, you get, uh, they do a cover of Kiss of Death by Dokken, which is actually pretty damn good. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's fun stuff, right? And uh, Andy Kuntz, Kuntz, or Kuntz, Andy Kuntz, Kuntz uh, a really, really great singer. And I think one of the unheralded vocalist in prog metal. He's really, really good. Uh, and he shines on all these albums. So that's my number. Number eight. Uh, my number seven is another world part two. Like I said, <laughs> not much to choose from between the two, but I just feel like this has a few more crunchy tunes, a few more up-tempo tunes. I, I think that's the, their wheelhouse is uh, Stefan Lil's distorted tone, it's just killer, the production is massive and uh, like most metal, I think it benefits from up-tempo and this one just has a few more up-tempo tunes than the part one. My number seven, uh, 
second album, The God Thing from 1997. Sorry, Ken, I love it, but it's <laughs> not quite not quite going to be as high as uh, as uh, we spoke about uh, talking about Ken Golden on, on the In the Prog Seat show. He's like, uh, The God Thing better be number one from the both of you. I'm like, well, not quite. Uh, I love it, though. Again, huge jump up in quality from the first album to here. And I, I know a lot of people love this album. I, when it came out, I was totally into it. Uh, you got some scorching stuff here. I think Andy, uh, really the whole band, uh, you know, Andy, Stefan Lill, the guitarist, Andreas Lill, the drummer, uh, Torsten Riker and Gunther Werno, Werno on keyboards. Every guy in this band is a virtuoso. And you can hear like star making quality all over this album you know it's really starting to show and rear its head um you know rainmaker garden of stones crown of thorns salt my wounds you fly all standout tracks all really good um yeah quality stuff great album cover you know and i always like their logo which i think is kind of cool so yeah, this yeah. Is great stuff great stuff i think but again you know it, it's funny and an album that good and it's number seven just goes to show you the strength of this catalog yeah. My number six is Ghost Experiment Awakening. This is real consistent, uh, not a down song on it, but maybe not as many jump out songs as usual. I can usually point to at least a couple songs where I'm like, wow, that's really great. This one, Beyond the Opening Track, Cold December Night, which got a great chorus. Beyond that, I'm not sure. It's a little bit amalgamous for me compared to some of the other ones, so I put it at number six. Yeah, I think those Ghost Experiment albums are pretty damn good. Um, I, you know, I sometimes get worried when these bands like release these like concept albums and they do like one after another and don't put them all in one set. You're always like, you always, you, you go into the feeling you're going to be kind of disappointed one over the other, but these are pretty strong. I mean, they, they've proven in their catalog that they do a pretty good job with that. My number, uh, Six, I originally had this higher. This is the one that kind of was all over the place in my ranking and I kept moving it around. And I'm, I'm thinking like, man, if we if we talk about this next week, I might even move it up higher. But Beyond Daylight from 2002, really good. Uh, this, I think, made my top 10 releases from that particular year. Um, the, uh, Free the Fire, a lot of hooks on this album. Nightwalker, really good prog metal anthem uh the title track is big and epic great keyboard and guitar exchanges all throughout this album really good production uh this one uh listened to a lot back in the day and again a really cool cover and uh yeah i i like it could rank higher i just I'm, i have had a hard time with this whole catalog because depending on your mood you know and depending on uh you know and and they were they were pretty prolific all throughout the 2000s and it's just like you just you kind of look back in time it's like well i remember i was really into that album for about a year year and a half but then two years later they released that one. Oh, but i still listen it's just like it was driving me crazy i just kept switching switching the order around i'm like so i you go throw them up in the air however they land there you go there's my order that's kind of how i feel here it's like for some people that's a fault you know it's samey and then for some people it's uh yes yes and i've heard people call this band kind of samey and i i, I get it but the yeah. albums are so freaking enjoyable and so exciting. It's like, it's... Isn't that the bottom line? Do you like yeah. it or do you not? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what you're going to get, and that's okay. I, I, I don't think the songs necessarily sound alike, and a lot of these albums have different flavors, but there is a formula right. that works for them, and they deliver. So, I don't know. My number five is The God Thing. This is the first one I really liked. I, I had the, the debut. I had Color Temple. I didn't care for it. I gave it to my friend Tomoko. And then I heard Occult, and I was turned off by that. that. That's like the worst record exec decision ever. Let's make our second album an all acoustic, repeat songs from the debut, put covers on it, and it's your second album. I, I never quite got that. Maybe they were trying to take advantage of the MTV Unplugged thing. I, was I guess, because it was right around that time, right? Yeah. yeah. So this comes out, and I had a friend have to tell me, no, seriously, you got to check it out. So sure enough, I, I hear the, the little instrumental, Fire Blossom, and then it goes into Rainmaker. That was one of my favorite songs that year, 97. Rainmaker, just real kick-ass. There's a few other really good songs. The thing with this album, why it's not higher, is uh, this one's a little tempo challenged. It's a lot of mid 
mid-range tempos and the songs do blend a little bit but uh strong album otherwise yeah and if i remember correctly didn't didn't this come out right around the same time or shortly before or after Dream Theater's Falling Into Infinity? And I remember a lot of people were like disappointed with that album. And I was pointing them to this. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, it's like, well, this is the kind of stuff that we want out of Dream Theater, right? Yeah. For the most part, that they kind of weren't delivering at the time. Yeah. All right. Uh, number five for me, again, could even rank higher. Uh, this is from 2002. Uh, 2010, sorry. Uh, the Seraphic Clockwork. Killer album. Really killer album. Great production. Great songs. It's big. It's bombastic. It's powerful. It's kind of theatrical because, again, this is right around the time. You know, the 2010s and onward, I think, is when Andy really was enjoying doing these kind of like rock opera-ish things. So it made the, the albums even more symphonic and kind of theatrical and bombastic. Uh, but they're still really heavy, and there's some great stuff on here. Uh, Scar of an Angel has some great vocals. Uh, the Final Murder is just absolutely killer. Uh, Holes in the Sky, On My Way to Jerusalem, Frequency, just top to bottom, really, really strong, could rank higher. Um, yeah, great, man. Great album artwork on most of these two, which I really like. They, they, they All their albums have like a certain feel. You know, you get the you get the, uh, the logo, which is always the same, and you get these really cool, you know, these really cool album covers and just they're very identifiable, which I like. That's one of the things about Vandenplas, I think, that I kind of like. And again, it goes back to some people don't because it's kind of samey. The albums have a certain feel, got the same logo. The albums all have a certain formula that really works for them. But I like a band that you can count on, like year in and year out, album after album. And I think these guys are one of the top progressive metal album, uh, bands of the last you know, 25 years that, don't, that kind of don't get the credit for it, but they should. And they put effort into the small things like cover art and production. And you know, you'd like to see a band that has all the bases covered. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. My number four is uh, Beyond Daylight. When this came out, I wasn't that high on it. This is one that's built up steam for me. Uh, yeah. Cold Wind's really good. Uh, Free the Fire, another good one. But uh, other than the, the one ballad on here, there's nothing to complain about on this one. That Ballads, to me, is not their strength. They're a little on the sappy side, but uh, they mostly avoid that pitfall in here, so I'll put this one at number four. Yeah, I think their ballads are a way for Andy to show off a different side to his voice, which yeah. he's very good at singing them. I mean, I'll give him credit. Their ballads, even though I'd rather hear them do more pedal to the metal stuff, uh, their ballads are well done. Uh, they're very melodic. They have nice hooks, and his vocal his vocals are just outstanding. But yeah, it's like do we generally speaking we don't need more than one of those in an album, and sometimes we don't need one every single album. Yeah, but but yeah, but he, it, there's no mistaking that he can do that stuff really really well. So, all right, my number four, right, uh, the Ghost Experiment Awakening from 2019. I I quite like this a lot. I I like both the Ghost Experiment albums pretty much equally as you will see in a minute uh these are big and epic and a lot of you know it's not like they have a lot of songs but the songs are lengthy and they're pretty intricate um and this is you know obviously part two of this uh, epic concept story this one's a little shorter though this one's like 45 minutes long which is okay but it's it's not lacking any great material i mean not all their albums need to be 65 70 minutes uh cold december night is a fantastic song uh, the Phantom of uh, Prens Toy Guards absolutely kicks ass. Um, what else on here? Three Ghosts is Killer, which is really melodic. I just, I like this album a lot. And I, to me, as much as I love this, I even like the next part better, which, uh, you know, again, doesn't always happen. Sometimes with these two part albums, I usually tend to favor the first part. But here, I think uh, I like uh, the second part. So coming up in a minute. All right. My number three is. Far Off Grace, 1999. This was a great year for prog metal. I mean, 99 is like the height of the uh, Dream Theater led whole the scene. Lemur Voice and Dreamscape and this, and Dream Theater had one that year, of course. Um, yeah, Iotic Rain, incredible. 
I can see incredible uh, into the sun. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, it's really, there's 10 songs, six of them start with I. Uh, how weird is that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did they plan that? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very strange. But uh, yeah, there's this, I think this has a few more wrinkles than a lot of some of their other albums, maybe it's before uh, they, they fell into some traps of, you know, maybe doing some things repetitively. This has a, a few more wrinkles. So I always like this one. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, you know, and you had uh, Symphony X were also starting to make some waves right around that time as well. Um, so, you know, you had a handful of bands that were all of a sudden, you know, th this was like uh, prog metal was was start because, you know, most of that decade was all about power metal bands, right? You had, you know, Dream Theater made their big splash and I think, but there wasn't a lot of other bands that were consistently doing well. Uh, but then by the late latter part of the decade you had you know these guys and a handful of others that were showing we're here to stay kind of right and i think prog metal was was a pretty viable subgenre of metal by that point yeah. all right my number three uh like i mentioned i'm going to go with part two of the ghost experiment illumination from 2020 i like this a lot um yeah it's just a great part two blazing start to finish when the world has fallen down, uh, under the horizon is big and heavy. Uh, I love the dramatic, the lonely Psychogon, kind of a cool title there. Black Walt's death is pretty freaking cool and just just lots of melodies there. Um, I just think these guys just keep getting better and better. And uh, it, it's just, it's hard to imagine like what great quality releases we've seen from them over the last like decade and a half, especially, and to think that where they could possibly go from here, you know, you keep, I keep waiting for them to really like seriously stumble. Um, but they just don't really do that. You know, they have a couple albums that are like, okay, not as good as others, but um, it's just high quality all the way. So that's my number three, dig it quite a bit. Another cool cover art. Yeah. I like that a lot. I, I like when you kind of put them both together, right. Cause they, Blue and red, yeah. Yeah, which is really neat. All right, number two. Number two is Seraphic Clockwork. Mostly on the strength of the first half. The first uh, four or five songs, man, well, it's one ass kicker after another. Yeah. Especially the lead track frequency, incredible. Uh, this is another one that when it came out, it just dominated, uh, I believe it was a summertime album, just dominated my summer. Uh, Actually, there's not much I can pick apart here. This is all, all good. And what you were saying about him, Andy's uh, focus on theater, I believe he's done theater there. I think, I don't, if they haven't done it for their stuff, he's done it with other productions. So it's probably affecting it, but uh, it's a great, great album. If, if you only get a couple Band of Plus albums, I would say this has got to be one of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would, yeah. And you know why? Because I think... That's a standalone album, and I think as a first start, even though I rank others higher, I think I, I wouldn't recommend to anybody starting off with this band to start off with some of the, the two part epics because that yeah. that should come later. I would think, uh, well, one that we're both going to talk about in, in a minute or so, but I would think that Seraphic Clockwork and Beyond Daylight are really good places to start. And maybe one other, uh, that one or two others that we'll get to, but um, yeah, it's it's that's a great one, really is. All right, my number two, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I am a big fan of part one of some of these and especially Chronicles of the Immortals, Netherworld from 2014, uh, the first of two parts. Uh, love the album cover, by the way. Really cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is cool because, I mean, you know, we talked about Andy doing theater or, you know, sings like he should be doing theater. He's basically like this storyline for these albums have all of these different characters now any other band would have probably brought in all these guest stars to go do the vocals for all the different characters not these guys and not this dude because andy Kuntz basically is like i'm gonna sing every part to this whole so whole, whole story he does a phenomenal job it's fun it's bombastic and loads of you know blazing guitar solos and keyboard solos uh memorable tracks all over the place but you know the album really flows as kind of like one long piece and it never really lets up. Um, a Ghost Requiem, King and the Children of Lost World, The Black Knight. I mean, so many great, great tracks on here. And it's real classy. That's what I like about these guys. They just, they have this classy 
element to them, which I think I really appreciate quite a bit. And that's, you know, I guess it's down to the songwriting, the production, the whole presentation type of thing. But yeah, that's my number two, Chronicles of the Immortals, Netherworld. And, you know, we haven't shown a picture of them. While you're talking about your pick, I'll see if I can get a picture of the whole band together here. So, uh, no. I was going to mention cool guys, too. I, uh, right after 9-11, they were supposed to play Prague Power, and they didn't show up because they were scared to fly except for the keyboard player he showed up and he was like the coolest dude like everyone's like oh you're the one guy that's not afraid and he's like yeah <laughs> he's downplaying it the whole thing so then they they came back the next year and played and uh they were great as tight as you would imagine and of course they all met with everybody and they're totally cool dudes but uh so for those of you watching if you haven't caught it already uh i interviewed uh their drummer uh, I'm trying to find him in there. There he is, Andreas, uh, on the channel. God, was that last, probably last year, I guess, or earlier this year? I don't even remember. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Really cool dude. Um, and, like, yeah, he was, uh, you know, very personal. There's Andy, the singer. Like I said, they're, they're all stars in this band because they're all virtuoso musicians, but Andy is a special talent. He is an exceptional vocalist, and, uh, you know, and Stefan is a killer guitar player the whole, the whole band is great but uh they're just uh they're well worth your time if you haven't checked them out well we both know number one christo yeah, i guess so right again Christo's the first though. half of this is so good the first five songs or so are just another level uh there's no doubt that if you're going to get one band in plus album that you go here yeah. It slips a little bit down the stretch, but... Uh, well, no. it's a long album. It's, yeah. it's a long album, uh, but it's... Yeah, I mean, and, and for everybody watching, it's based on the story, you know, the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, which is what it's all about. And uh, I, I remember when this first came out, I was I heard about the concept, and I'm like, oh, that's going to be kind of interesting. Are they going to be able to pull that off? <laughs> uh, so good. And the bonus track is... Uh, from uh, some kind of theater production, actually not connected to. The it's from Jesus Christ Superstar. Get yeah. get get, get I can never say it. Get Semine or whatever the hell. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's great. Thompson had a song called Get Semine too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that, from the original Jesus Christ Superstar, and Ian Gillen actually sang it on the uh, the original soundtrack. And Andy has gone on record saying he's a big fan of Ian Gillen, so it's not surprising they chose to tackle that. I tend to skip that one actually, but uh, yeah. One, one we passed that we didn't bring up, I was wondering about your opinion on, uh, I think it's Beyond Daylight, they do the Kansas cover. What'd you think of that? That's Why pretty good. That's pretty good. It was a little different take. Yeah. I, mean, I prefer to the original, but, you know. Yeah, it's point of no return. Yeah. yeah they use, uh, they don't use violin, right? So that if I remember correctly, they use synths to, in place of the violin. It's got a little more crunch to it, I think, but he sings it great. So as good as Andy is, I just missed Walsh. I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, Walsh is hard to replace, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. But this is good. Yeah. I would say if you're gonna start with any Van and Plaza album, I think this is a great one. I think your your best choices, you know, I mean, Seraphic Clockwork and this are a great one-two punch to start with because they're single albums. Um you know, a lot of people like the God thing. Beyond Daylight is really good. But, you know, if you're feeling adventurous, get any of the, the two album concept pieces because they're really good. But, uh, yeah, this this is, I mean, there's just so many great songs on here. Uh, and also, we didn't talk about it, but the live album is really good. It covers the early stuff. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I, would have, I would love to see these guys live one of these days. Yeah, there, there's a DVD out from uh, from Prague Power, the Seraphic Clockwork Tour, and uh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, you know, unfortunately here in this country, we don't get a lot of these progressive metal bands playing live. I mean, that's that's just the, the sad thing. I mean, Prague Power has been a great institution over the years to allow some of these European bands to come over and play. But, you know, other than like Fate's Warning and Dream Theater and Symphony X and, you know, a couple of others here and there, we don't we don't get a lot of this. Uh, no, on these shores, and it's a shake in ever gray. Mm -hmm. I mean, beyond that, yeah, you know, make it Symphony X next year. Woo yeah, if it wasn't for Pride Power, I would have never seen Van and Plus, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> how good was he live? 
Oh, he's spot on. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I, I figured he would be. He doesn't have that kind of voice where you'd think that uh, he would fail live, and he, he sure didn't. Yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, number one for both of us is Cristo from 2006, a great concept album, prog, prog metal concept album. Uh, lots of fun, but this whole catalog is lots of fun. So uh, start wherever you like. We gave you our recommendations of, of what might be the best place to start, but uh, you know, you can pick any of these and they're all winners. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Uh, tune in to see George uh, every Tuesday night on In the Prog Seat and uh, tune in to see me uh, basically every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching for George and me. I am Pete Parter. We'll see you guys later on. What do we got coming up this week? We've got uh, the Monsters Den tomorrow, Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin Popo off Friday morning. And uh, Sunday is album homework assignment. Also, we got another ranking show coming up tomorrow. We've got Rand Kelly and myself uh, ranking the albums of Norwegian Prague Act Wobbler. So that's coming up tomorrow. So uh, amongst all sorts of new album reviews tomorrow. It's been a busy week. A lot of great new releases. So we've got, uh, what do we got on tap? The new Alcatraz, new Gus G, uh, new Lucifer, new uh, Jeremy Green, new Marillion Fugazi box set, all sorts of stuff and maybe you'll get the new Tremonti as well if I can squeeze it and I don't know if I'm, I can but we'll do our best but uh so that's what you got in store thanks for watching please subscribe if you haven't already click on that notification bell and uh, we'll see you here on the channel real soon for George I am Pete take care everybody bye-bye